She, this is her first time to the e-tourism summit, and if you could all indulge me just a little bit, she, this is the first time that she's going to uh, be introduced to everybody here, and I've got two really good things to break the ice. First off is each and every week she runs a uh, live radio show in southern Arizona and across the border in Mexico. That's right. So every week, yeah, it's by national, so connecting both uh, people from, the, from Mexico and Arizona. And uh, a recent stat of hers is uh, she recently made the Hispanic Latin uh, GMA inspiration list in 2021. So how was that? That's right. That was a surprise. And I was very, very proud of Tucson. Yeah. So Visit Tucson right now is currently running a uh, multicultural campaign targeted towards uh, Hispanic Americans. And it is the first time that Visit Tucson has ever ran a Spanish-only language campaign. And we're very excited to be able to share a little bit, that, uh, a little bit uh, with you today on that. But let me back up for a second, because many of you may not know who Orange 142 is. Uh, we are a full-service marketing and advertising agency that serves the travel and tourism industry. Um, but what makes us really unique and really right for the uh, Hispanic marketing efforts that we're going to share with Marisol is that just a short while ago, we were, uh, we were purchased by a company called um, Direct Digital Holdings. And why that is so uh, special for us as a company, it is minor minority owned and operated, and they have uh, brought to our company uh, an ad technology platform that really allows us to reach the multicultural uh, customer. And so in this case, for Visit Tucson, we are able to reach a Hispanic owned and operated publishers and platforms on our proprietary systems on the buy and sell side because we own our own SSP. And an interesting tidbit, uh, tidbit for our company, we are the ninth uh, black owned company to go public in America. And we just celebrated our uh, one year of being on the NASDAQ back in this past February. But when we talk about multicultural tourism, why is that really important? It's because when you look at the growth of just what a melting pot America continues to be, uh, we are so diverse and it really goes beyond just focusing on the numbers for why you want to impact your business this way, right? And so I'm gonna share some research at the end of our uh, discussion today, but what we have found is that when you truly support these minority communities, they're gonna support you back. And at the end of the day, that's really smart business. And so I'd like to start off and ask Marisol is what really makes uh, Hispanic uh, and multicultural marketing important for Visit Tucson? So Scott, uh, we are located just 100 miles from the border. It's just we are in the Sonora border uh, by national region. And where our food, our culture, our heritage, and even the name of the streets are in Spanish. So we are a, a multicultural and bilingual destination for sure. And, um, and also the binational tourism is a staple for our local economy where 24 million people cross the border with money in their pocket every year to Arizona. And to our local economy in Tucson is one billion, one billion would be. So it's a big, huge, uh, it's one of the main important, uh, or the main market for, for Arizona, for the US, then for Arizona, and then for Tucson. And um, so VC Tucson based this campaign on, uh, on the results that we've been seeing with the Spanish speaking market from Mexico. So uh, our um, Metro Tucson tourism, um, tourism plan, they uh, recommend us to reach out the Spanish speaking market and the huge and growing market, the, Hisp the Hispanic market in the US. So that's the reason, and if you, and like you were uh, seeing the numbers right now, uh, the Hispanic market, the Hispanic population is the second largest in the US and keep growing. It's the number five in GDP, and also the number five in world economy. Can you believe that? So if we don't go after them, if we don't go 
go after that market, if we don't talk to them, if we don't connect with them, if we don't market into them, then we leave your money under, uh, on the table. So I always say to my office, we should be done this like 10 years ago, a decade ago. I'm just saying, so. That's a very good point. So as a, a visitor destination, how does Tucson really embrace um, your Spanish-speaking visitors? Yeah, so as I mentioned, it's 50% of our population is uh, descended from Hispanic. Most of them, they speak Spanish, but also as our events, our, co our uh, city of gastronomy, creative city of gastronomy, but also the festival that embrace and, and engage with this, um, with this market. For instance, uh, they can feel free to speak Spanish, English or Spanglish, or uh, they, they can go to places, the culture, they can make that connection with the culture. For instance, some of what we're doing in our visuals and the story is to try to appeal to their emotion and the nostalgia so they can see these iconic uh, places, um, the historical places, and also the food, which is, um, is one of our main assets. And tell us to, um, you know, I mentioned that this was the first time mm -hmm. that you're actually targeting Hispanics in the United States. That's right. Why now? So we start seeing, I will be honest, uh, finally we had the budget to do it. Ah. So we are investing $200,000 in this campaign. And that's the, that's the honest uh, reason. But as I mentioned, we should be doing it a decade ago. But one of the reasons is because we're seeing the numbers. As you see the numbers right now, we're seeing the, they are the second largest population. And they're just waiting for us to be connected, to talk to them, to invite them to our destination. So tell us a little bit about the campaign of Vamos a Tucson. Vamos and, a Tucson. And what, what was your goal? Tucson es tu casa. Uh, Tucson is your home. Our goal is to um, go after that market, the Hispanic market, where they and tell them that they, we are ready to welcome them with their open arms in their language and their culture, that they can feel open, like I mentioned, to speak English, Spanish, or Spanglish, where they, uh, where they can explore with the family and make memories in the amazing Sonora Desert. So like, like we see right now in the, in the screen, some of the markets that we are um, reaching out right now is uh, Los Angeles, Denver, of course, Phoenix, El Paso, Albuquerque, and Chicago. Most of these markets are the driver market to our destination, except with the Chicago. And we are seeing an amazing, amazing uh, results uh, so far from the campaigns that we are in, the taxes that were being implemented. And, um, and I think we are the, uh, the perfect destination to start doing this. What can you tell us about all the different media tactics that you are deploying? Some of the media tactics we are doing, the streaming audio, why? Because we love music and Latinos and Hispanic have the music in their blood. So we have a campaign on um, Spotify and I have radio and uh, also in video where uh, the visuals where people can see themselves. Like we were talking about be, be authentic. We really want the people to see themselves like exploring the desert, the Sonora Desert, the culture, the iconic places, the food, the music. And uh, so that's what we've been doing. We're doing the social media programming and uh, what else are we doing? Uh, like, um, I forget. Uh, OTT, OTT, and we're working with, obviously, Orange uh, 142, partnering, and also with NBC, Telemundo, iHeartRadio, Spotify, and uh, some of the channels that this um, market is consuming. Like right now, we're seeing the video, um, and, and the video you're going to see uh, that we are appealing to emotions and nostalgia, and, uh, and, and you're going to see we're using most of um, the, the people included. It's the normal people hiking in the Sonora Desert. It's the normal people going to listen to music and, and, and visiting the iconic places like uh, is, um, San Javier Mission. So I don't know if we can um, start playing the video. And with the music and the message that they will, um, that is gonna connect with them.
so I will take uh, this moment to invite every single one of you that you haven't made it to Tucson to put in your bucket list. So while this campaign is currently running, you know, we, uh, we don't have uh, many year-over-year -year stats, uh, but most of the media channel um, KPIs are meeting or exceeding industry standards. Uh, but uh, the, for the first month and a half, uh, the campaign uh, drove 175% increase of visitation to Vamos to Tucson website. Mm -hmm. And just uh, this morning, we got some updated numbers that that's now up to 500% because we're flighting the program, so we're layering on different media tactics. But now it's a 5x of what it was last year. So we're moving in the right direction. Uh, we'll it, have more. Is the top performance, the site top performance for the um, past two months? But I will say then the history of the site. So we are really excited to see that the interest and the engagement is right there. Yeah, and we're making a concerted effort to continue to put more uh, energy and resources. Uh, Marisol said it, said it best, is we're using this also to reinforce for their stakeholders uh, the ability to unlock greater budgets so that we can continue to drive um, you know, more Hispanic audiences to Tucson from this side of the border. That's right. So we are ready to uh, start welcoming uh, the Hispanic market in, the, in, in Tucson and see them. And um, first of all, it's going to be awareness consideration and overall uh, conversion in room night. So that's our main goal. So let's look at a little bit of anybody that might be interested in getting started with uh, Hispanic advertising. Some of the tips, do you want to give the tips? Yes, yeah. please. Okay, let's do it. So please do not use Google Translation for your marketing campaign. <laughs> I will beg you, don't do it, okay? Avoid the epic mistakes. Um, please uh, work with the native speak Spanish so they can understand the context, the tone and the style, and also the local slangs. Yeah, you want to go to the right. next one? Well, I, I really like the first one, if we should focus on that, and I'd okay. like to start. Okay. So, um, appeals to the emotions, as I mentioned, the nostalgia, to make them feel like they are welcome, but also um, to make them feel that traveling to your destination is the right choice. Of course, I want them to go to Tucson, all of them, but I will give you the tips, and I will be more than happy to um, to work with you and talking to you after the conference to, to give you more tips and probably we can uh, exchange best practices. And one thing that I would add, you know, when I used to be a, a DMO, CMO, I used to go out into the marketplace a couple times a year and I would find uh, different groups to talk to and, and query them about what brought them to our destination and why. Mm -hmm. and. Did they see what they expected, specifically when they're minority markets uh, or min minorities? And so a lot of that information and insight went to a lot of uh, the programming that we decided to launch at a later date to better cultivate those groups. Because I really feel that, you know, we're all trying to be more inclusive with our marketing. And to me, that really starts with understanding your minority audiences and, and doing everything you can to support uh, their communities. And, and I said it earlier, but, uh, you know, and, and you can see some of this in the research. The more that we can support uh, these communities, the more that they're going to have our back. And it's, it, it's really a, a great way to, to, to move your business forward and to gain market share. That's right, yes, Kat, and, and not leave the money on the table. They're just waiting to be reached out to get the uh, invitation to come to your destination. So it's a huge and growing market in the U.S. And we'll leave you with this uh, before we sign off. Uh, if you're interested in some really great research on the multicultural audiences from the consumer perspective, uh, please feel free to, to download this. Uh, we'll be around the rest of the conference if you have any questions. And please uh, go up and introduce yourself to Marisol. The more people that she gets to know, uh, she can't come and say she doesn't know too many people here at this conference. Perfect. Thank you so much. Gracias. Gracias.